Hello everyone, Mike Simon here, AKA Dirt Perfect. Today we're gonna to cover load securement. All right, everybody, welcome. Uh, Dirt Perfect's here at the Indiana State Police I-70 Terre Haute scale facility. Uh, we're located just west of Terre Haute, Indiana, of course, on I-70. Uh, my name's uh, Brent Hoover. I'm a master trooper with the Indiana State Police. I've been in our commercial vehicle enforcement division for over 10 years now of my career. And today we're going to talk a little bit about load securement, different aspects of load securement as far as what us as roadside inspectors, what we're looking for. So um, first thing here, Mike, he did a nice job of bringing us a variety of equipment today. So we're gonna kind of look over the equipment and kind of, I'm gonna give you what we're looking for as far as equipment. So uh, since I've got my hand on it, we've got a piece of equipment, but first and foremost, let's, let's start off with chains and binders and how we determine working load limit, size of the chain, any defects and everything else. So first and foremost, we're gonna look at the piece itself. So when we're looking at the piece of chain itself, what exactly are we looking for? We're looking at all the available links. Is there any damage? Is there any warping? Is there any bent links? Anything that would look off, we're going to look at. And, and we even have these tools called a chain gauge. Um, real nice tool. Uh, chain safe, made by Brake Tech Tools. I, I love this. American made, but basically what it is, this has numbers on it in the typical size of chains, and we can basically real quick go through and we can find out, okay, that's a 3 h chain. Well, immediately on the other side, and you can see it's marked out of service, is another uh, size for 3 8 so You can see this link here doesn't fit, but what this is, this side of this chain gauge is 20% smaller. So in the federal regs, any excess wear greater than 20 percent on any of these links so if i if i come through and i go okay that's a 3 h chain and i'm checking it and let's just say i get to a spot that's war or bent or stretch and i can get my chain gauge on that i know that hey that link's not going to be good enough to use so plus another nice um and i don't know if they they designed it this way, but I like to use this straight edge here to kind of check my links for anything bent. You can see that one's good and straight. So, hey, that's going to that's gonna pass that test. It's going to look pretty good. So we've gone through, we've looked, you know, looked at the section of chain. I get a lot of questions about hooks, type of hooks. Um, but big thing is we're just kind of looking. And you can see these G70s, G70s. So what that's telling me is it's a grade 70 um, hook. Um, grade 70, there's like five or six different grades of chain. Grade 70 is your typical run-of-the-mill chain that we use here in the U.S. Um, they have lower grades. Of course, lower grades have different different ratings. So a 3 h chain, grade 70 is good for 6,600 pounds of working load limit. So now we'll, you, we'll you know that, that off the top of your head, but you can find that in the... Uh... Oh, absolutely, in the book, and we'll show you here, the chart here in a few minutes. Um, there's the chart you can look up, and it shows all the working load limits for the different grades of chain. And then, two, depending on the chain, um, you can even kind of come in, and every, like, fifth or sixth link on here, and it's really visible on a brand new, that just... USA. Sometimes on the links themselves, you can come through and you can find a G, G7. Let's see, that's the manufacturer. And like I said, brand new chain. You can really tell, but but looking at it, in my experience, this is the this is the real deal. You can really tell the, the cheap stuff. So now that we've kind of determined, okay. How's our chain look? Any defects? Any inappropriate links? That type of stuff. What's the size of it? Can, how can we use it? Then we come to the binder itself, whether it be ratchet style. Um, this is a new type of speed binder or even the snatch, you know, whatever kind. They're all still legal here in the U.S. I get that question a lot. 
which ones are legal, which ones are not. They're all they're all legal. I think it's also um, important to point out that you do have to have some adjustable form of tightening, exactly, correct? Exactly. Exactly. So so this being a perfect example. So what I've seen some some individuals will do, they'll come in and then they'll hook it to the trailer and whatever means they may hook this and then they pull the equipment forward and make it tight and then only use a binder on the opposite end. That's not permissible. Every section of securement is required to have a tensioning device so that as things shift or, or say this tire had a small air leak in it, over the course of traveling six or seven hours, it's gonna allow that to settle. Well, the driver's gotta be able to adjust this while in transit and go from there. So you see some trailers with winches, they like to pull them up and pull those winch cables tight. Mm, not quite gonna do it or, or the same thing. So, you know, using just a standard stretch of chain like that and tighten it down, that's gonna be a violation each and every time. So, so very good point there. So, um, and again, the binders, um, every binder, the way it's manufactured, it's gonna have a working load limit. So you can see here on this one, we got 9,200 pound working load limit. So, looking at this, looking at the chain and the binder so the chain and the binder working together we know this has got 92 and we said this chain has got 6600 working load limit so but something else to remember leave it to the feds as soon as you get it mix it up so it makes you confused even more how we've got this set up here hooked to the equipment coming down to the trailer is going to get 50 percent of the working load limit and that is from the weakest link exactly in there. exactly so knowing that this only gets 50 percent yep we got a binder that's 92 but we got to go to our weakest link which is this chain which is the 6600 so 50 50 percent 3300 pounds is what we would give this so looking at each section we would then add that up and what are we adding that up for well also in the federal regulations in 393.130, it says whatever you're carrying equipment wise and the other, um, other sections, you gotta cover 50% of the weight. So let's just say this piece of equipment here weighs 50,000 pounds. That means we have to cover 25,000 pounds with our working load limit. So when we come through, we're looking, and remember if it attaches to the equipment, to the trailer, it gets 50%. If it goes up and over to the other side, like let's say um, a bulldozer blade is a perfect example. You got the blade lowered, you hook here, you go up and over and down, that's gonna get 100%. So just keep, I'm keep that in mind. If I'm going from this side of the trailer, up and over my load to that side of the trailer, gets 100 percent so just to recap real quick to make sure we're all on the same page we have to cover 25,000 pounds for x piece of equipment that configuration right there due to that being the weakest link we're going to basically take 3,300 pounds off yep. our 25,000 mm -hmm. so we still got 22,000 to cover yes so if we had that same chain going up and over the piece of equipment and back down to the other side we would get a full 6,600 so we could take 6,600 6, off you off could that, take that off. um so. And, and I'm sure you're going to lead into this, but equipment over 10,000 pounds, you have to do the four corners, correct? Exactly, exactly. So um, that's all kind of the big thing is looking at what you're carrying, what you're doing. So um, this case here, this being a roller, let's say it's 11,000 pounds. So 11,000 pounds in the regulations, it requires that any machinery greater than 10,001 pounds is required four corners so we got our one two three four so our four corners and then it goes in any accessory equipment blades shovels um, excavators you do a lot of excavators um, putting that down the blades any of that accessory equipment has to be secured as well and then it goes even further so this is an articulated piece of equipment so articulated roller, articulated dump truck, articulated loader, whatever. Skitter. Skitter. 
Um, yeah, we can't forget the can't forget the longer wades in there. So, um, but uh, when it comes to be articulated, it's got to be secured to prevent articulation while in transport. That can be done in two manners. One, you can see at one point some newer machinery come with load locks or steering locks. If you got that lock in place, that's going to meet the criteria. Or older piece of equipment like this, greater than 10,000, you would need some sort of additional securement here in the middle to prevent articulation. And this would be a good example of where you could run a chain up and over through the machine to the other exactly. side. Exactly, something, something to prevent that, prevent that articulation. Um, and, and really a lot of guys, that's the one piece that really kind of gets forgotten about. But remember we were trying to claim that, especially on our bigger equipment, we may get our four corners down. And since it reduced by half, that's a good location to pick up a lot of additional load securement to whittle off that working load limit of the entire piece. And there's kind of three different levels of hauling equipment. You got your, your landscapers with a lot of 10,000 and under equipment. You got your mid-sized excavators like me, which usually four corners and one chain over an accessory will cover your weight. Mm -hmm. Then you got your heavy haul guys. Yes. And yes. The, the, they, they have to throw chains to get working load limit. It, exactly. A lot of times you're sitting here going, well, wait a minute, this smaller chain. But if you ever notice those heavy haulers going down the road, they really ramp up their chainage. So they, they will use half inch. And remember I said there's different grades. They'll even step up and go with a, a bigger grade to get that bigger working load limit. So you may see a big piece of equipment go rolling down the road and he may have his four corners, two in the middle, and you go, well, how would he, how would he get that weight? Well, he's probably got half inch grade 80, 90, it gets a lot more working load limit and adds up quicker for it. And the, the one other thing I want to hit on here real quick with this that you touched on a little bit was uh, accessories, whether it's got a blade or a bucket or a trencher or mm -hmm. um, a crane with outriggers. I mean, like a backhoe with outriggers, um, there's a couple different things there, but anything that's attached to that can move independently from the machine needs to be secured it, additionally. Exactly, and, and you brought up the perfect example, backhoes. Um, backhoes are one of those, just the way they're designed, all their features, they, and I, and I tell this to guys all the time, if you get what's basically required to fit, you're going to have your working load limit. Because by the time you get your four corners, by the time you lower the rear bucket, secure it, lower the front bucket, secure it, you've got your working load limit. And the d question too is what about like the, uh, the backhoe outriggers? That, that come down, um, there's an interpretation that says, hey, if, if, it's, if it comes down and would basically protrude out, leave it up in the locked manner. And a lot of those manufacturers have those locks. So, so one question for you, like on a backhoe, they have a transport lock that holds the boom up in the up position. Is, is that acceptable for? That is acceptable. Okay. And there's additional interpretations on that. And same thing with like some trenchers, um, keeping those in the up, they got locks. So, and again with the locks, we're starting to see basically the, just like anything else, the, the regulations take just a little bit of time to catch up and the industry's advanced so much. Like I'm sure we can sit here and talk where you've been doing this, what, 15, 20 years? Correct. You've seen all sorts of advances in equipment right. that, you know, now manufacturers, it, they don't, they'll, they'll put all those locks on and then the regulations. And, and the manufacturers are also getting better about actually putting approved tie downs exactly, on. Exactly, exactly. Because we run into that a lot, you know, mm -hmm. it, as far as out here, we're, we got the book out and we're telling the poor driver, hey, you got to have four points of securement. And he's like, I don't have anything to secure back here. So, so manufacturers have gotten better as far as including transport places to secure that as well. So uh, we've covered equipment 10,000 pounds and over. Uh, we have a piece of equipment here that's 10,000 pounds or less. Or less. So, so what, what do the rules and regulations state on this? Basically, in, in the federal regs, anything less than 10,000 or transporting vehicles, you got to have a bare minimum of one in the front, one in the rear. Um, and you're, you're covering that weight. So basically one in the front, one in the rear. In this case here, tractor's loaded sideways. We've got straps coming up and through. So again, we, we would look and 
first things you know you come through which tag it's on the other side, other side. but typically a two inch strap you're looking at two thousand pounds that's a good rule of thumb um now what will put you out of service on a strap we, we discussed the chains on a strap what would put you out of service basically um what it is in in our out of service criteria we're looking for any cuts nicks dings and we can we basically look and say there's a quarter inch here quarter inch there quarter inch there that's three quarters of an inch that would do it in but in the book and I'm wanting to say a half inch on a four inch strap is enough um, but there's those different criteria so nicks cuts abrasions in and, and a lot of times i'm telling telling guys don't forget around the hooks which these are a little bit made better to where these are curved but we'll get a lot of those four inch straps got those flat plates and you may have a strap through here looks great but then you get down there Man. and it's halfway through from that from the various angles but equipment cars anything less than 10,001 pounds one on the front one on the rear anything greater than 10 two on the front two on the rear and, and, then it adds and I think a backhoe would be a great example so if you're gonna legally tear down a backhoe you would do the four corners you'd have one chain on the bucket and you'd have one chain on the bucket on the front mm -hmm. so you basically end up mm -hmm. with um, so basically you've got yeah. the four corners of the machine and then the two accessories exactly. on the end. Exactly. And, and that's why backhoes are one of those. By the time you drag all that chain and done, you're well over that 50% mark. Uh, in closing, a couple things I want to hit on real mm -hmm. quick. I'm sure, uh, one, you've probably never wrote a ticket for having too many chains on a piece of equipment. No. no. Um, and, and out, drag another one out. Drag another yeah. one out. And if you have uh, a strap that's cut, a chain with a big link, a chain that's loose, that gets minus from your working load exactly. limit. So if you don't have an extra chain, and you, so you could get a chain that's out of service, I guess, but if you still got enough chains on the machine to cover the working load limit, you're still legal. Exactly, exactly. So, so looking at this piece, if we stop for roadside inspection and this was loose to the point that, you know, we could wiggle it, that's taken away from the working load limit. And now I no longer have a corner covered, so exactly. I'm out of service. So you'd be placed out of service until that's correct. Now, you are based here in Indiana, mm -hmm. um, but a lot of these regulations are federal regulations. Yes, everything we've, we've talked about is, is federal regulations. You can look these up yourself. Just go to the FMCSA website, type in federal regulations, it's section 393 and look in the 100s. The 100s cover all the good stuff about load securement chains. Everything I've been yapping on about is located in 393-100s. Um, and, and the best way I know to describe this, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but the federal regulations are like the baseline the whole country uses. Yes. Now the states yes. can add to that. So Absolutely. they may have some additional regulations, but, but this is the baseline. Uh, but this is pretty well the baseline stuff. So um, here in the case of the uh, state of Indiana, we adopt everything that the feds put out. So basically, um, with that being said, if you're a commercial operation, we are gonna apply the federal regulations towards that load securement. If you're just Joe Bob, got your own tractor, transporting your stuff from point A to point B, it may not be as stringent, but you still have load securement that you gotta check your home state as far as that. Is, uh, if anybody has any additional questions, is there a way to uh, reach out to you? Absolutely. <clears throat> um, I, I manage the Indiana State Police Commercial Vehicle Enforcement Division Facebook page. Big long, I didn't get to check, put the name on it, but if you've got any questions, I like to put tips, tricks on things that we find roadside so that uh, guys can come to look at. Um, I'm a big believer in, especially using the social media platform, that if I take a few minutes, work with you, and show you what's going on, or share that tip or that trick or that photo of a violation, then look how many people can expand out. But by far, yes, if you got any questions, go to the Indiana State Police Commercial Vehicle Enforcement Division, send me a message, it's gonna come straight to me, and I'll do everything I can to get that. Yeah, and I'm sure, uh... I'm sure we'll get Randy and his team with Heavy Mill Learning to link that in the description. I've known Officer Hoover for 12, 15 years. Yeah, 12, 15 long, long years, time. Yeah. Um, he, I actually met him on a roadside stop. We've become good friends. Uh, he's the real deal. He, he's a good guy, and he really does go out of his way to educate him. I know I appreciate that greatly. I know there's a bunch of people out here that appreciate that as well. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time yeah, to do absolutely. that today, sir. Absolutely. We, uh, we appreciate it. And uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. Be safe.